Hi, this is Pete, and in today's video, I'm going to demonstrate a method for modifying Content Center family tables and having that apply to already placed Content Center data. The classic example is going to be a fastener. So if I go ahead and right click and place from Content Center, I'll find that there's my truss head machine screw. And right away, this data is out of the box inventor. So it probably isn't going to be named the way you want. It may not even have all the metadata that you want. And you can see that I've already done some modifications to some other families that more fall in line with my company standard. But I'll go ahead and place one of these. I'll grab the number 10 by one inch and I'll do UNF. And even some of this may not make a lot of sense. Like not everybody knows what the thread pitch is when you do the thread type. So we'll make some mods there. I can place that fastener grounded at the origin. And then the last aspect of it is the metadata. So the name here may not be what we want. And if we look at the I properties, I don't know hardly anybody that uses this as their part number. They'll use a fastenal number or some internal number to their company to label the fastener. So what we want to do is we want to make changes, but most of the time, people have already been placing these fasteners from the content center. It's great data, it's easy to access, it works really well in the assemblies. It's just not correct for our, our internal processes. So to fix that, we are going to go ahead and make this a <clears throat> custom family. So I have to find my truss head machine screw type one. And what I'll do is I will copy that over to my custom content. So you want to make sure you copy it because we want to maintain the link to what's already there. So I'm going to copy it over to my personal content center library. And this is where I can start to make changes. So there are a couple things you can't change. I can right click here and change the family properties and I can rename the family. So I can come in here and you can see that I've got different types. So I can type in, let's see, make it more. So there is a Phillips panhead machine screw. So I'll call this Phillips truss machine screw. Oops. I can change that. I cannot change the folder name. And the reason why is because it's already stored existing data that I want to reuse. So I'm going to leave that alone, the folder name, but I can change the family name. Hit OK. And then additionally, we can make changes to the family table. So if we right click and edit the family table, I'm just going to make some, some quick changes. Uh, maybe we'll change a couple rows just so you can see it. Uh, so the one that I placed was a number 10. So if I come down to number 10, there was a 1032 by one inch, ah, row 220. And if we scoot over, we can see that the part number is that goofy technical ANSI name, which like I said, virtually nobody uses in real life. So <clears throat> I can't change the file name, however. So you, if you wanna create a formula, and I've got other videos that demonstrate how to do that. But I'll rename this one and let's grab like a two inch one so you can see it happen in real time. So there's a 1032 two inch, that's row 236. I will change that one also. There. So again, I'm just doing this really quick and easy. There are other videos that talk about uh, different ways to control this. The other thing I'm going to do is look at my key columns to make the selection a little bit easier. Thread type is not really that helpful, but thread per unit, which is the actual pitch, is. So I'll put that in there, rearrange it, and then I can even rename this column just to make it a little bit easier. Thread per unit might not make sense to people. Thread pitch may. You can do some of those types of changes and we'll accept. So once we make these changes, now we can see the ramifications in our local library, or our local document, sorry. So I'll make sure I save this assembly, and then I can go to the refresh, and notice it sees that it's been refreshed. And the reason why is because we did not change the family folder. 
we did not change the part file, meaning the file name. As long as those stay consistent, this data that we change should come back and rewrite over the top. So we'll refresh that, let it grind away for a second, and you'll notice that this changed to match up with the family name, but also if we look at the I properties, the file name stayed the same, the folder stayed the same, but our part number now is using our updated metadata. So that's what I would recommend using if you wanted to go ahead and keep existing fasteners as is, but you want to be able to change the metadata for all of those existing placed fasteners. This is how I would do that. And then just to show you another example to finish off, I'll go ahead and place that two inch version and notice instead of that UNC UNF, now it says thread pitch. I can pick the 10 by two. 32 was the pitch I used, hit OK. So we can even make those types of selections. Drop this in place. And now if we look at the bill, you can see it did take on the F0003. So hopefully you found that video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, uh, just please let me know down below and have a blessed day.